Back to building blocks, a path towards secure and measurable software. Experts have identified a few programming languages that both lack traits associated with memory, safety. So C and C++ are not memory safe programming languages. Rust, on the contrary, is an example of a memory safe language. So basically, this is a pledge from the White House to write your code in a safe language, not in C anymore. Now, with this video, I would like to show you why this is true. Because C is a very powerful language. But we know that with great power comes great responsibility. So in C, you really need to understand what is going on underneath the hood. So let's make a practical example here. I have these two char arrays, hello world, then a function that is going to print the two strings, ac function, that takes as an input s1, namely hello, and then again, the printf of the two strings, a super simple piece of code. Now let's try to launch it. So compile and launch. And as you can see from the output, we have hello world, and then we have hello neo. What is weird with this output? Well, the thing is that the function hack is taking as an input S1, but we have changed S2 here. Namely, the function hack has been able to change something in another place in memory with the string Neo. So now I want to show you visually what is going on underneath the hood. Do obj dump dash D and the executable and you will get the actual assembly code. But this is kind of tedious and we're going to leverage another better tool. This is going to be, of course, GDB, the GNU debugger. This is a cryptic tool, but it gets the work done. So I'm going to compile again the code, this time adding the bagging symbols. And I'm going to also compile for that 32 bit machine just to make the output more readable. We can do that. This is totally fine. We can do that. Now I'm going to do GDB and the executable. Enter. Now, in my GDB, I have one special extension, which is PEDA or PEDA, I don't know. And PEDA is this Python exploit development assistance for GDB. Basically, it's going to give us a very intelligible output with all the colors. It is pretty handy stuff and it's super easy to install, so I highly suggest. So let's start to do something. I want to see the assembly code of the main. So I'm going to do DSAS main boom and as you can see immediately we have the assembly code colored but we can do more we can do dsas dash s for source and the function which is going to be main look how marvelous this is we have the assembly code and the actual c code so you can see the mapping between c and assembly marvelous right and i want to check what is going on with this char array initialization so we can understand super well what is going on with the memory at this stage. So to do that, we're going to put a break in this specific position, which is main plus 40. So the command is break at main plus 40. Enter. So we have the breakpoint and now we can run. To do that, simply use R. All right, now we see a lot of stuff. This can be confusing, but you will see we're going to focus our attention in simple things. So it's going to become easy. We froze the execution at this exact position, which is main plus 40. And we have a move L of this specific value. Basically, move in assembly means move data. Here we have the source and here we have the destination. The source is this hexadecimal value. Now, the destination is an offset respective to the base pointer. Here at the very top, you have all the registers. Yx, Bx, Cx, Dx right so these are the general purpose one and bp is the base pointer sp stack pointer ep instruction pointer and the e flags so we have everything that we need here we got a dump of the actual stack now this can be a visual representation of what is going on this is the main activation record right in which we have all the data related to the main function now let's assume for the sake of argument that this is empty. We are going to only focus on the strings themselves. This is the base pointer. As you can see, it points to the base of the activation record main. Now, counterintuitively, this is the base because the stack is a data structure that grows from top to bottom. So the base is at the top and the top is at the bottom, right? 
So the stack pointer is pointing here at the very top. Now, this is the process memory layout, a very simplified version. We have the stack here and at the very bottom, we have the code, the actual instructions. Now we miss the heap, we miss the data, we miss the dynamic libraries, we miss a lot of things, but for the sake of argument, we're gonna only focus on the stack by now. So that's what we have. Here we can see all the registers, and the focus now is on uh, the base pointer. So now we are the CPU, we have to move L. So move an integer, which is this one at base pointer minus this value, which is 20, right? 16 plus four. Let's do that. So let's find the offset. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 19 and 20. So here, is where the instruction wants me to put data. So the data is gonna be this hexadecimal value, but what am I looking at? What is this value? Well, let's simply go to an hexadecimal converter and let's do X to text. So we have this value, convert. Of course, we're gonna get hell in reverse. So the symbol for eight is the value for uppercase H. And here we can see LL. In lowercase. So basically the instruction wants me to put H E L L in that specific location, which is 20 bytes respective to the base pointer. So this is what we get. At this location, we're gonna put H E L L in this fashion. Nice. So now here in the stack, we should see here at this level, a change. Let's step one instruction. So I'm gonna do step instruction as e enter so now as you can see in the stack at the offset of 20 bytes we have the actual string h e l l and now we have another instruction so move this integer which is 20 to c 6 f let's convert again and we get o comma and a space this time we have to do at an offset of base pointer minus 16. So here is 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Here, we have to put that value. So now we have this scenario here. We put O, comma, space, and zero. This is the most significant byte. As you can see here, we have only three bytes, but this is an integer. So we also have the zero, zero, which is a sentinel value for the end of the string. So you understand now that with these two operations, we basically put the string hello comma space in a specific place in the stack making reference with the base pointer nice let's step this instruction so step instruction and this is what we get right here you can see actually the string so this position here is basically base pointer minus 20 right base pointer being here at the very top of the stack minus 20 we come here at the h here in gdb we can also explore with the command examine slash uh, minus 20 byte by byte from the base pointer so e b p enter and here we can literally read our string here you can see 6c 6c which are the l right so h e l l o comma space zero we can actually see the string in hexadecimal so now it's time for the following instruction which is this one move l and this value and you got the gist of it right let's just very briefly translate this to so copy past so we have world in reverse so with this assembly instruction we have to move this integer at 1a which is 16 plus 10 26 from base pointer so here's 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is the scenario that we get, right? We write world in this fashion. Let's go to the following instruction. Now we have to move W, which simply is a short. It is a 64 at minus 16 plus 6, 22. And 64, of course, is a D. So we're gonna very simply put a D in this position and a zero here at the top because this is a short. So we are talking about two bytes. All right, game done. Now we can see our two strings in the stack with this specific order. Now we are in a position to understand 
the higher level C code. When I call my function ACK, I'm passing S1. S1 is simply a pointer to what? Pointer to the first char of my string, right? So a pointer to H here because we know that's an array at the end of the day the case into a pointer to the first element so my function ack at the very top is taking this pointer right it's taking a pointer to h basically my function ack is taking a pointer here at this h but i understand very well how in memory stuff is laid down so what can i do i can say please don't modify this string just modify another one and here I say string copy in S minus six. So I do S minus six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, this is the world string. Now string copy is going to copy Neo in this position. So I get N E O and a backslash zero here. You see, that's why we get that specific output. And if everything is correct, at this position, we have to get a D, which is basically H minus two. So let's write a printf of a char. So percent C new line at position S1 minus two. And this we have to dereference because we want the char, not the pointer. Let's try. So compile a launch. And as you can see, we get our D. We get exactly this char here. We have total control, a total understanding of what is going on in memory. So this simple code is showing you how stuff can be risky because with the ACK function, I can change parameters which are in other places in memory. This is a very simple example. Let me show you something more interesting. So here I have a very simple program that is going to take a password, a string from the user, and it's going to check if the password is correct. In that case, it's gonna run some specific code. Through that, I have a flag, a boolean, that is gonna be turned on if the password is correct, a tiny buffer for the actual password, then I gotta prompt the user to insert the password, and I have a get string function, which is notoriously unsafe because it doesn't make any buffer check. So this is prone to buffer overflow things. Then I have a string compare, the password is lol, if the password is correct, I'm gonna turn on the flag, basically pass check equal true. And then I simply say, if the pass is correct, run your important code. Here you can have a sensible piece of code that is doing some malicious stuff. So let's try to run this code. Of course, just compiling is gonna tell me, hey, pay attention, get string is not a safe function, but this is just to show you what you can do. I'm gonna launch, insert the password. The correct one is gonna be lol. I'm gonna insert a, 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 a. Nothing happens because the password is not correct. If I do b, 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 still nothing, but the buffer is four. And given that I have a good understanding of what is going on in memory, if I do something like star, 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 so now the buffer is filled and this specific byte is for the Boolean. So I can put whatever char and it's going to evaluate to true because true is whatever value different from zero sorry here i can put five enter now of course i get some detecting things so we have systems to understand what is going on right stack smashing detected but if we compile our code with this flag no stack protector enter and let's launch again now i'm gonna do star 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 and these bytes is for the boolean because I understand what is going on with the memory. I'm gonna put here a five. What is going to happen, my friend? Enter. Well, as you can see, I managed to break this <laughs> password management with a simple buffer overflow. Basically, this five is gonna turn on the value for the boolean because I understand the stack memory layout. So this is a simple video to show you what you can do with C and how deep you can go. Of course, there's plenty of better videos online that we're gonna show you buffer overflows, attacks, and everything that you can do. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you, my friend.